So you've already had a chance to uh, see what synthetic division looks like and to um, hopefully think about how to use it. Now, now I'm just going to show you how to do it. So uh, I'm going to find all zeros for this. So I'm going to find all anything, any x value that if I plug it into this equation makes a zero. So first thing I'm going to do is graph that. Um, so I don't have to do any guess and checking. So and look, oh whoa, it's already graphed. Um, so right is right here, and and look, I can on this graph I can see the three zeros. Uh, there's one here, one here, and one here. Negative seven, negative three, and negative one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this negative seven and I'm I'm going to use it. So. I'm going to say that that negative 7 is a 0 of this. That means if I were to factor this, it would have an x plus 7 as a factor. So I could do long division. I could go this polynomial divided by x minus, uh, x plus 7. Or I could take the 0 for x plus 7, the negative 7, and I could use synthetic division to get there. So I'm going to lift out that, that 0, that root, and then I'm going to lift the coefficients out of this. So I have 1x cubed, uh, 11 x squared. Sorry about that. 31 x's and 21 ones. So as I do my synthetic division, uh, the first term just comes down, the one, and then I multiply. Negative seven times one is negative seven. And then the rest of the steps, I always just do the same thing. So add these together, that gives me a four. Um, negative seven times four, something you should just know, is negative 28. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna add those together. Just add these, I get three. And then I multiply again, three times negative seven, negative 21, my remainder zero. So that this goes into this evenly. So what I did kind of factoring wise is I, I, I took this, divided it by that. So I have X plus seven times, this would be X squared plus four X plus three. So now uh, I'm gonna think about that X squared plus four X plus three. And I could try and factor it, I could use quadratic formula. Um, and this actually, I look at it, it's pretty factorable. Uh, x plus three times x plus one. So my other zeros then is, remember I'm making, I'm making zeros. So once I factor it, what makes this a zero? Negative three. What makes this a zero? Negative one. And there are my three zeros. Great, so that's that first one. So let's do that second one. Let me change the color over for us. And that is this one. And as I look at it, ooh, those are ugly. Zoom in a little bit. Oh, good. I have a zero here at, at three. So I'm going to use that, that three, that zero, and see if I can get these other ones somehow. So I'm going to use that three. So I know from the graph that one of the zeros is three. That would mean I'm factoring out an x minus three from this, or dividing it out, really. So let me do my synthetic division. Uh, I take the root of this, the three, take the coefficients out of here, one x cubed, negative three x squared, negative seven x's, and a 21, 21 ones. Now I do the synthetic division. Remember this process. Bring it down, multiply. Add, multiply, add, multiply, add. Whoops, <laughs> I was getting ahead of myself with the zero there. Cool, I have a remainder of zero. That means that this goes into that evenly. What I did was I just factored uh, this polynomial right here. Um, I divided it by x minus three and what was left with was one x squared, zero x's, and a negative seven. So now from here, what I could do is I could try and factor uh, this part that's left, this x squared minus seven, um, or I could run it through the quadratic formula. Basically what I want to do is solve this. So if you shove that in the quadratic formula, yeah, you're in good shape, you'll get there. I think it's kind of easy just to solve this one algebraically. Add seven to both sides, x squared equals seven. So x equals plus or minus the square root of seven. So that means my zeros here would be three square root of seven and negative square root of seven. Cool, last one, let's do it. And again, surprise, surprise, here it is. Okay, and I have a zero here at five, and I don't have any, I'm an intercept here at five and a zero, but I don't have any other intercepts. So I'm gonna find the other zeros, even though they're not x-intercepts. So where would, this only crosses the x-axis at one spot. 
but since it's a cubic it should have could have three zeros let's go ahead and give it a try so change my color so one of my zeros was was five my only zero well my only x intercept was five and uh, that means that x minus five should be a factor of that so I'm going to factor out that x minus 5 or divide this by x minus 5 using the synthetic division. Notice I use the 0 from here. And then I have 1x cubed, negative 9x squared, 25x's, and negative 25 1. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm uh, just bring down the first term with my synthetic division. Now I multiply. 5 times 1 is 5. And then I add negative 4, multiply, negative 20, add 5, multiply 25, zero my remainder zero so that did go into it again what i did was i, I divided by this x minus five and what it left was since this was a cubic it scales it one down to a quadratic one x squared minus four x plus five and so now i have this to deal with this x squared minus four x plus five and uh, what i could try to do is factor that but i'm not going to be able to so i'm gonna have to use quadratic formula so remember quadratic formula uh, negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So uh, b is negative 4, so negative negative 4. <laughs> um, plus or minus the square root of b squared negative 4 squared minus 4 times a times c is 5 all over 2 times a. So that uh, negative negative 4 is 4. 16 minus 20 over 2. So that would be 4 plus or minus 16 minus 20 is negative 4. Oh, look, there's my issue right there. Um, I'm trying to take square root of a negative. Well, we know how to do that. If I take the square root of a negative, that's just uh, an imaginary. So this is 4 plus or minus. The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of negative 1 is i. That's over 2. These are both divisible by that 2, so 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2i divided by 2 is just i. So there's my, for when that's equal to 0, there's my solutions. Notice they're imaginary solutions. My zeros for this are 5, uh, 2 plus i, and 2 minus i. Now, these are complex. These have this imaginary component, so that means that they're they're, they are zeros. In other words, if I, if I plug 2 plus i into this for x, this would evaluate to 0. But they're not x-intercepts. They're imaginary. Every number that's on this graph is, is real. There are no imaginary numbers here. So what I would like to do, one last thing, is just think about dealing with these imaginary numbers. Um, notice it comes out of the quadratic formula. It always has that plus or minus. So these will come in this form where it's something my, plus something else, something minus that same something else. They're called conjugate pairs. We'll talk more about them next week. Uh, let me just think about manipulation. If I had square root of negative 75, think about how we could manipulate this. Um, I want to do as much of the square rooting as I can. So I'm going to think of this as negative 1 times what perfect square is going to 75? 25 and 3. So there are pieces I can square root here. I can square root 25, which is 5. Um, I can square root negative 1, which is, which is i. I can't square root, well, I can uh, square root of 3, but I don't get a whole number. So I'm just going to leave this as root 3. Now you can write it this way, 5 root 3i. That's the way I prefer to write it. Some people will write it 5i root 3, but just make sure that the i is not inside of the, uh, of the square root. All right, give those problems a try. Uh, message me if you have any questions.